The book is broken into four modules. Now, module one looks at organisational responsibilities, organisational accountabilities, and accounting. So chapter one will really explore what is accounting and we'll just show how rich accounting really is. Whereas chapter two will look at organisations and their reporting boundaries. In chapter one, we'll emphasise that organisations have different categories of performance. So we'll talk about financial performance, we'll talk about social performance, and we'll talk, talk about environmental performance. Again, we're not going to, we don't do this book in a way that we launch directly into financial accounting or, or financial measures. We show that there's different aspects of performance. In chapter one, we, we use this reasonably simple diagram to explain that views on organisational responsibilities impact views about organisational accountabilities, which in turn impacts the decisions about what accounts to prepare, how we might do our accounting. As I've already noted, chapter one introduces this accountability model, which we utilise throughout the book to explain different types of accounting or different focus of accounting. So the accountability model is fairly straightforward. It starts with the question, why would an organisation collect and report particular information? Then it will then go to issues, to whom is the organisation reporting that information? Then it will consider, well, what information is it collecting and reporting? And then how it should best um, report that information. So again, this why, to whom, what and how model of accountability is utilised throughout the book. And again, it's, it's proved very useful in explaining the different facets of accounting. As I noted, throughout the book, we will be using various reflective exercises. There, there isn't a precise answer to some of these. So this is just one example. So these are sorts of questions we're getting the students to reflect upon and to consider the role of accounting and its various social, the various social aspects of accounting. This is another example of an exhibit that's in the book. And there's many exhibits in the book, but this is another example in, in the early chapters to just, you know, this is a common thing we see. Who is accountable? And then we'll go on to address, if they are accountable, what sort of accounts should they prepare in, in relation to these omissions? This is yet another example of the sort of reflective exercises we're using in the book. Now, the point with all these reflective exercises is it really encourages the students to consider issues to do with accounting that they probably have never considered before. They didn't possibly think that accounting can address issues like this. We also address issues to do with not-for-profit entities and consider how the account or the responsibilities, accountabilities and accounting of not-for-profits is generally quite different to for-profit organisations. This is an exhibit from chapter two, which requires the readers, the students, to reflect on how broad we might take the reporting boundaries of an organisation. And we talk again about how our perceptions about organisational responsibilities will impact the accountabilities that managers will accept and how broad they should take their accounting. Should they think about workers in unrelated, unrelated factories within the supply chains? Very topical given modern slavery acts that are being introduced throughout the world, including within Australia. So again, you know, these issues are there to explore and extend notions of accounting and accountability. 
This is an example of an exhibit in the book where we look at how we might extend the accountability of an organisation. So we, would we talk about, for example, shipping companies, and we talk about what happens to the ships at the end of the life cycle of the ship. So ships last for, you know, most ocean going ships last for say 25 years. So we explore, should organisations that use these ocean going ships, do they have an accountability for what happens to those ships at the end of their life cycle? Do they have an accountability for what happens in the ship breaking yards? Do they have an accountability for the environmental damage that often occurs when these ships are being broken up? And do they have an accountability for the injuries that take place? Again, issues, rich issues to do with accounting.